Hey guys, I am the Comics Kid 2099 and I am here to talk Trek. You may or may not realize that I am not a huge Trekkie. I like some of what I've seen and I hate some of what I've seen, but I am nowhere near an expert or anything like that. So you may be asking, what are you doing with a piece of the expanded universe that some Trekkies wouldn't even consider air quotes canon with the air quotes real Trek? The answer to that lies in John Byrne. Regardless of my personal feelings on the man, for the most part, when he's working on comic book stuff, he knows what he's doing. He is one of the few artists who I will blindly follow to buy whatever book he's doing. And the premise of this book seemed new reader friendly enough that I wouldn't have to be a Trekkie to understand what was going on. This book is called Star Trek Assignment Earth. And I could tell you the general premise, but I think the back of the book does a much better job than I could, so I'll just read to you what it says. The 1968 TV episode Assignment Earth had been the season 2 finale for the original Star Trek series, and was intended by Gene Roddenberry as the pilot for a spin-off series that never came to pass. Now, John Byrne delivers the series 40 years after it would have debuted, recounting the adventures of interstellar agent Gary Seven and his Earth-born assistant as they covertly confront threats to the past so that they can save Star Trek's future. I highly suspect that the original Assignment Earth episode of Star Trek was a way to capitalize on the popularity of the British television series Doctor Who, which by this point had been going on for five years. Alien secret agent, human female companion, having adventures on Earth with alien threats and the like. So even though I'm supposedly talking Trek here, if you find yourself to be a Who fan, or at least more of one than I am, then you'd probably enjoy this book a great deal, as it's basically Who in everything but name. The other thing that I forgot to mention about this book is that each issue jumps forward one year. So the first issue starts in 1968, when if this had been an actual spin-off of Star Trek, the first episode would have aired. So the final issue was set in 1972. This is a neat concept, although many of these adventures really feel like they could have been set at any point in the mythical 1960s, with two of them being the notable exceptions. The first issue deals with a Soviet plot to foil an American super nuclear project. This is possibly the weakest of the series. There's very little here that really feels like it belongs in a Star Trek story, even a story set in the 1960s of the Star Trek world. If anything, this feels like a truncated version of the James Bond story Dr. No. It ultimately shows us a brief glimpse into Gary that we don't get to see in any other story that I've seen with him, but this is made moot since the next issue is set a year later, and this is very much like it reboots the chance to look into Gary as a character. The second issue is a crossover with an episode of the original Star Trek series, where Gary and Roberta struggle to save the day without being recognized by the crew of the Enterprise. We are told that the Enterprise that is now in the 1960s will not meet Gary and Roberta for another year relative to them. I haven't actually seen the episode of Star Trek that this issue is crossing over with, and for the most part it does a good job of guiding you through the story if you have not seen that episode. But I still don't especially care for this issue, as it seems to make the efforts of the characters in that episode seem unimportant, as Gary and Roberta had to be there to secretly save the day without being seen. And then, even then, it seems like this entire issue is pointless as Gary and Roberta travel back in time roughly one day and stop themselves from doing anything in the first place. And this, I guess, erases the duplicate Roberta and Gary from the future. I don't know how consistent this is with Star Trek time travel, but it just comes across like this entire issue is pointless and you can just skip it. The third issue is one that really does kind of have to be part of a specific time period, as it mentions the tragedy of Kent State, and it even evokes similar emotions that you think of when you think of the Vietnam War. In this story, Gary and Roberta run afoul of a cloning ploy that could easily escalate out of control of the men responsible for it. This issue is maybe one of my favorites, as it has just the right amount of alien science fictioniness, but it doesn't feel the need to be embedded in the world of Star Trek as the previous issue does. This issue also gives us a love interest for Roberta, and I really like the way his story plays out. And then we find out in a truly touching moment that he died the same year that he went to war. But, once again, instead of the book taking any moments to explore how this would affect Roberta, it jumps forward one year in time because that's the premise that we are dealing with. 
The fourth issue is a strange one. We get to see the aliens that Gary works for and their enemies, and we see that these enemies are a gigantic threat across the galaxy. But at the end of the day, because each issue is self-contained, these guys get dealt with in a frankly easy manner, and it feels sort of anticlimactic at the end. The final story is another one that could only have happened at a specific time. We see that the Soviets are attempting to replace Nixon with someone who has been surgically altered to look like him. Gary and Roberta stumble onto this plot, but at the end, the two Nixons get into a fight, one of them dies, and we don't really know which one is the real Nixon. Then we flash forward two years later, where we see Nixon resigning from office. So I want to say that one thing I really like about this book is that each issue stands on its own. You don't have any of this nonsense that is practically company policy these days, where you have a six-part storyline, and then that arc is just part of a larger puzzle, and it takes you five years to even begin to see that larger puzzle. <coughs> Brian Michael Bendis. <coughs> In the five issues that we get, every one of them stands completely alone, which, once upon a time, that's how all comic books were, and it made reading them infinitely more easier, and it made trying to get into a new series also easier. Something to keep in mind, companies. Anyhow, this is certainly because of the idea that each issue is like a select adventure from one season of this Imaginary Assignment Earth series that never existed. It kind of would have been impossible to do any kind of arc at all, and the arc that we do get is a little, well, sloppy would be a nice way of putting it. It seems like the species that Gary and Roberta deal with in issue 4 are responsible for giving alien technology to some of the villains that we saw in previous issues. But as I said, that was tied up kind of quickly considering the amount of weight that is put on it throughout the book and that particular issue. One thing that kind of puzzled me about this book was the handling of certain subjects that I do not feel like would have even been mentioned in television in the late 1960s. I just don't see criticizing the president being something that would have been done before Watergate. It seems more like something that someone would do in a story set during that time now that we've had some 40 years to look back at that time. And it would be one thing if this was just a story featuring these two that is set in the 1960s since that's when these characters debuted. But the conceit of this book is that it is pretending to be the Assignment Earth TV series that we never got. So taking that to its logical end point, I would think that we would not have an episode that so openly criticizes war or the President of the United States. In a given episode of Star Trek, instead of saying the Vietnam War is bad, they might say that the Klingon-Romulan War or whatever is bad. They would create doubles for real-life figures and countries and the like, and then make their political statement in secret. So in short, this book, in just a few places, feels just a little false when it tries to pretend like it's fiction from the 1960s and early 1970s. And then there's the fact that any time we get a little close to having an emotional moment with Gary or Roberta, we jump over the emotional part right into another story. I know I like the fact that these issues stood so well on their own, but it's times like this when I wish that this had been a few Assignment Earth miniseries, just so that we could have more time to experience Roberta's sorrow when her boyfriend dies, or get to see how Gary deals with a woman that he liked turning out to be a Soviet agent. And I would be lying if part of me just wishes that we had more Adventures of Gary and Roberta by John Byrne. I have read part of the Life and Times of Khan Noonie and Singh novel, which also has a great deal of Roberta and Gary in it, but that doesn't bring me the glory of Byrne's art that we have here, which really is top notch. So overall, a very fun story, and if you overthink it a whole heck of a lot like I did, then you might have some problems with it. But even the worst issue of this bunch isn't really bad in my humble, just doesn't measure up to some of the other issues. So anyhow, I hope that you guys found this review helpful, and if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you want to hear me talk Trek some more in the future, I'll be sure to see what I can do. Until that time, I've got more videos coming throughout the rest of the week, so look forward to those. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.